Hello, my fellow Whovians. This is Alan, and welcome back to another edition of Doctor Who Review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the 154th Doctor Who story, Silver Nemesis, starring Sylvester McCoy as the Seventh Doctor. And the plot of Silver Nemesis, which I'm just going to read off of Wikipedia, is as follows. The Doctor and Ace visit England in 1988, where three rival factions, the Cybermen, a group of neo-Nazis, and a 17th century sorceress named Lady Pinefort, are attempting to gain control of a statue made of living metal, Validium, that was created by Rassilon as the ultimate defense for Gallifrey. The statue has three components, a bow, an arrow, and the figure itself, that must be brought together in order for it to be activated. They have been separated since 1638, when in order to foil the first attempt by Pinefort to seize it, the Doctor launched the figure into orbit in a powered asteroid. You follow me? This asteroid has been approaching the Earth at 25 yearly intervals ever since, leaving a succession of disasters in its wake and has now crash landed near Windsor Castle. And basically, that's your plot. Of Silver Nemesis. Okay, Silver Nemesis. I really had to sit down and think really, really hard about this one uh, to come up with my final verdict of Silver Nemesis. It's that kind of story. Silver Nemesis was the story that celebrated the 25th anniversary, or the Silver anniversary of Doctor Who, hence the title Silver Nemesis, and hence the return of the Cybermen, and hence, I just figured it out now, the fact that this uh, asteroid that the uh, the living, breathing statue has been put on uh, approaches Earth every 25 years. 25th anniversary of Doctor Who? Do you get it? Do you get it? Yeah. So there you go. Silver Nemesis celebrating the 25th anniversary of Doctor Who. There's stuff in it that I like. I think uh, there's there's definitely some some good things in Silver Nemesis, and I do have to admit the story is a little bit better than I remembered it to be as a kid, but it's still the worst Cyberman story I've ever seen. <laughs> it's not horrible. I don't hate Silver Nemesis, but I still can't quite give it a pass, you guys. There's something about it that just turns me off, and we'll get to that shortly. What are the positives? about Silver Nemesis. Okay, well, first of all, I like the uh, performances by everybody in the cast. I think Sylvester McCoy, very good, very solid as the Doctor. I think Sophie Aldred, very good as companion Ace. I also like how uh, Ace gets to do a lot of physical stuff in this story. I like all the scenes where she's running around trying to escape the Cybermen. I also like it when she uh, takes out her slingshot to fling gold coins at the Cybermen, because, you know, uh, the Cybermen, they don't like gold. You know, gold is to Cybermen what kryptonite is to Superman. You know, it's it's their weakness. So I like watching, you know, Ace fling those gold coins at the Cybermen, and the coins hit the Cybermen, <laughs> sparks, and the Cybermen go, oh, and they die like that. Uh, I do like the sound of the Cybermen dying. I love that electronic, oh as they die and sparks all over the place that's always fun to watch but yeah Sophie Aldred very good as Ace McCoy very good as the Doctor and I really do like their chemistry they they really do make a good pair uh, McCoy and, uh, and Aldred and they do have good Doctor companion chemistry um, so I like them uh, regarding the supporting cast, Fiona Walker as Lady Pineford. I think she's a very good villainess. She plays the part just evil enough without going overboard about it. Um, so she has some kind of elegance about her, really, as, as villainous Lady Pineford. Gerald Murphy as her companion Richard, who's always saying to her, Milady, 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 what do we do now? Milady, what do we do? Milady, let's do this. Milady, let's do that. And he's as devoted to her as devoted can be. You can tell right away that Richard is a good man, but unfortunately he's saddled with this, this evil woman that he has to obey. But uh, yeah, Gerald Murphy, very good, very, very likable indeed as uh, Lady Pinefort's companion Richard. So I liked him. David Banks, once again, very powerful as the cyber leader. With that big, deep cyber leader voice of his. Yeah, David Banks, very good as the cyber leader. I think those are the main uh, people in the supporting cast that I liked. I think the location work on this story is very good, even though I'm still saddened that they no longer use film to shoot uh, the location stuff. I mean, I love that old-style 
uh, Doctor Who blending where all the location stuff is shot on film and all the studio stuff is shot on videotape. But now everything is shot on videotape. So, you know, it kind of cheapens the look of the location stuff. But nonetheless, I have to admit that the location work on this story is very good. Once again, directed by Chris Clough. Chris Clough directing a whole lot of Sylvester McCoy uh, this season. <laughs> he's getting a lot of work. Well, he directed a couple of stories uh, last season. I guess he's the current director for hire uh, right now on, uh, on Doctor Who's timeline, directing all kinds of Sylvester McCoy stories. Uh, for the TV series. But yeah, I think Chris Close's direction here is is very good. I did like that location stuff, especially in, I guess it was a big, huge warehouse. And there's this one shot where, uh, there's this one bit where Ace is being chased by Cybermen, like really, really high up on this really high catwalk. And uh, I, I wonder how that must have been for Sophie Aldred to shoot that. But she had to go really high up on a catwalk. And, uh, you know, the camera follows her uh, down the catwalk as the Cybermen are chasing her really high up. Uh, in the warehouse, and I thought that scene was was really well shot, and uh, you know that had some you know had some good tension there. Um, so Chris Close's direction, I think, is very good. What's not good about Silver Nemesis, and what brings it down for me, is the plot. The plot just isn't very good. You know, um, I this whole thing about this living, breathing statue, which by the way looks really cool. I mean, they add some really bright light visual effects to the statue to make it look really, really impressive. And it does look impressive. But the concept of this story, the concept of, of a living, breathing statue uh, that looks like Lady Pinefort, that it has a bow and an arrow, and the whole thing between the Doctor and Lady Pinefort that apparently they had some sort of conflict back in 1638. So the Doctor puts the statue in this in this powered asteroid. It's like a little rocket ship, but it looks like an asteroid. It's an asteroid, but it has rocket boosters on it. Okay, well, first of all, where did the Doctor get the powered asteroid? <laughs> where did he get it? And what exactly was his and Pineford's beef with each other? Uh, other than, uh, I mean, I mean, how did he come in contact with Lady Pineford in in the first place? Uh, that's what I'd like to know. Obviously, he wanted to keep the statue away from her, but uh, I'd like to know what what is their backstory? What is the backstory of their conflict, the Doctor and Lady Pineford? And we're not given that information. And again, where the heck did the Doctor get the powered asteroid to put the uh, the statue in and fling it off into space? And another thing. The Cybermen, how did they find out about the powered statue? Obviously, they want it because it's a powerful thing, but how did they find out about it? An argument could be made that the Cybermen don't even need to be in this story. They're just there. They just they just find out about this this powerful statue and, and they want it. But, but how did they find out about the statue? We're not told that information. There's a few characters in the story that didn't need to be here at all. For example, there's a scene involving a couple of skinheads who uh, confront Lady Pineford and Richard and, you know, demand money from them. And then, of course, apparently Lady Pineford and Richard get the upper hand by hanging them up in a tree. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Uh, the two skinheads didn't need to be in the story at all. That, that, that was just a time waster, the, the, the two skinheads. And another character who's more or less a time waster is Mrs. Remington, played by the late, great Dolores Gray, who was a very popular actress from film and theater in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. Heck, she remained active uh, right up until her death, I think in 2002. Uh, Dolores Gray. She shows up here as Mrs. Remington, a very wealthy woman in a, in a limousine who shows up and she gives, basically she gives Lady Pineford and uh, Richard a ride. You know, they hitch a ride with her in her limousine for a little while. But on the one hand, while it's cool to see Dolores Gray, her character's pointless too. Her character doesn't need to be there at all. Uh, I don't even know why Dolores Gray agreed to do this episode of Doctor Who. But anyway, her character's pointless. She didn't need to be there. There are some cheap visual effects in this story. I mean, when you see, like, the, the Cybermen spaceship come into land, it looks fake. I do like the bright light visual effects involving the statue, that they make the statue look super bright white, and it looked really cool. It looked pretty ominous. But the visual effects involving the, the Cybermen spaceship, just total fakey. I just think the plot is, is kind of messy, and there are characters here that don't need to be there. The Cybermen have been much better in, in, in other stories. Like I said, the best thing about them is I love watching them die. Sparks everywhere and they go, Aah! when they die. That's fun to watch. But other than that, uh, the Cybermen have definitely been better. And how the hell did they find out about the statue anyway? And I don't think we're ever told that. 
Yeah, Silver Nemesis for me, you guys, is a really mixed bag. I mean, it's it's got good production values, it's got good acting in it, it's nice to see the Cybermen again, but again, the, the plot with the statue just doesn't add up. And where's... I wanted more backstory of uh, the Doctor and Pinefort and what their actual conflict was before the Doctor sent the statue off into space. We're not given that information. How did the Cybermen find out about the statue? We're not given that information. And like I said, there's a few characters in the story that didn't even need to be there. So I'm left feeling about Silver Nemesis that it's a mixed bag. It's a very mixed bag of a Doctor Who story. So in the end, despite all the good stuff in it, I can't overlook the bad stuff that's in it as well. So for me, Silver Nemesis falls right down the middle. So on a scale of one to four stars, you know what I'm going to give it. I'm going to give Silver Nemesis two out of four stars. Two out of four stars for Silver Nemesis. It's a little bit better than I remembered it to be as a kid, I'll give it that. Um, it's not a terrible Doctor Who story, but I can't say it's good either, it's just so-so. Silver Nemesis. And that's my review, folks, of Silver Nemesis. So, next time on Doctor Who Review, Sylvester McCoy's second season as the Doctor concludes with the 155th Doctor Who story, The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. Yep. It's a circus in space. Oh boy. The greatest show in the galaxy next time on Doctor Who Review. This is Alan. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time on Doctor Who Review.